I just wanted to talk about that and the preparation, you just, you know, being a bit more aware, you know, understanding where sort of the risk is to be taken. And, I, and I've been thinking about it myself. I think really is to be taken pretty much straight away. Um, I think it come out about three seconds past and you basically could have just lifted, lifted that um, straight away. But I'll talk about the reasoning behind why I thought about this. Uh, I should have actually put the the yield level, yield chart in as well, which I haven't put in. Um, and you're, if you go and look at that yourself, you'll see sort of why you're getting this move, leaning into it, and especially after you've got that like false break down here. But if you go and look at that, you'll, you'll understand a little bit more. So you've noticed as well, when you look at it, compare it to like the European bond market that you'll get, you've had a similar type of structure that broke out and the sort of the spread between the two went, um, you know, pretty far. So building into, into that, you, you're taking a little bit of like a comparison between them and you're waiting for maybe something that can trigger the US market to do what the European done. And that's the sort of way I was thinking. So building this away through there and then profile wise, this, so this is just the data. So you are compressed as well. You know, this P-shaped day you got here, you know, very empty. This th this day here, I got the arrow down to. So you had, it was a pretty quick move down here to the big levels. And the levels that you've got, if you then look at the yield chart, you'll see that it's like a, it's like a triple top, quadruple top. You know, you could go on, because it's literally sat literally right below here. So a break of that level, level would be quite significant. So again, yeah. So after you see all of this position and go down this way, you can understand the building of this the, the false break, then this nice profile structure you got at the bottom with the tail, you sat sideways, it's not the best profile, but that's why I felt another day and then we go. But obviously the number, it all generates, you know, you could target these levels on a daily basis, but also on a bigger picture, you could look for like a two day move, which, you know, I know it's holding into data and it's a little bit of luck that it's going the right way, but the positioning that you're building here is way, more for the upside. Again, you've got maybe a two day move, three day move, you know, you're seeing, and you can just then add the charts in like I do at the end, just to where we got to um, from the last couple of days as well. So I put my little, little points down here for myself, but that's pretty much what I'm explaining through throughout that. It's all that positioning you've got. And again, you zoom out on the daily and you look at the yield chart, you, you'll understand it even bigger on what, where this can supposedly lead to. And again, you've got that move through there. So from those points of view, there's like there's two ways you could take the trade, but understand understanding where the access point is. To put all your risk on really was just to lift it straight away. The jobs number was, you know, out of line quite well too. Um, you know, you, you only really had to stomach 30 seconds before it started to, you know, bid up, go away from you. So that's just one second. Another little thing that I put down just by the gold blipped up a lot like about 70, 80 ticks really straight away. Did a big pullback very quickly. Again, something else you could look at, but when you're looking at one sort of specific trade idea, don't need to worry about what the gold done. You'll see that it just did a big pullback and then went back up. Gave you a good little value trade as well. So this is 15 seconds. So after 15 seconds, you can see what we got. Um, so mainly I, I traded the two year on it, which again, I don't know, I sort of, I was a bit worried about how far it's going to blip. So I think it blipped, two year blipped around 18 ticks, something like that. So you're paying up quite a way. You basically paid up the day's range at that point. And again, switching from zero to 100 and understanding what you want to be doing. So the five year would have blipped a little bit more. You wang around, I don't really think it wang around that much. You see the difference. Didn't really do too much. That's, so you're probably put buying, you know, up here. So it would have come back to pretty much your price two year near near enough so they're the difference between those two and then the move happens and then there you've got the one minute so you had one large one minute count with the five minute count as well the rest, the rest the rest of the day just hung up there um but understanding the real picture that you want to be sort of taking i think is what let me down and holding this for you know a decent period because i put the five minute up and you'll see it obviously chopped about round after the first 20 minutes and sat there and then obviously the next day. So I think when you look back at it, it's 
all down to how how you plan the whole um, the whole idea and understanding the execution point. Because you can understand, I think this this part I would say is the easier part to understand. Because you know, there's not really any emotion in understanding this. But when you're putting a bit of size on on, a, on a, and understanding where your access point is, because with a you know with a decent miss that you got those highs should have been the minimum sort of area you were looking at. It can then hold and there's some more highs you can take out. And as you'll see at the end here, you know, you've had another move up, then you stall now for today. Um, yeah, today so far. So I'll see what happens after this. This could then build a base and keep going, but understanding there's a good you know, like a two day trade uh, with a couple of bits of data involved while you're above like here, there's no reason why. And then I don't really think it will, it can come back, you know, unless we see any change between now and the, um, and the Fed meeting that's coming up, you know, being aware of that, where we can go, you know, is, are you near enough the end? But just the understanding of it all, I thought was quite like an important, um, important thing because when technical trades haven't really been happening and the data's not been, I think like the last, I think the last week there's been a couple of decent points for data. You know, the, and I like the European and like data points aren't the aren't the best, um, but like I think even like this, the the, the, the like the small and the European ones are pretty good. I know buying in line, but doing your little bit of maths with all the other points and where they, how, you know, they've all been, basically, they've all had a beat, so an inline core, you know, it's a, it's a good buy, um, a good bit of risk reward there. Factor in that, you know, that was 20 ticks in the wind very quickly or smash and grab, but just, you know, hopefully things like this can start coming back into it because I know it's been quiet, having some nice, like, technical moves that you can, you know, from building from a decent period of time, you know, there's a couple of weeks there um, and so on. But that's what I wanted to go through, just just sort of that move. Um, and for me, that I need to, you know, just work on the plan a bit harder and, you know, be a bit more trust of, you know, taking a little bit more risk. Um, when you're seeing these sort of setups, not, you know, I think maybe you can get a little bit lethargic of going, oh, it's going to go the next day, which I think is what I, which is what I did. I mean, I only bought, I bought one clip in the two year and that was it. Um, didn't really run it far, far enough. And, you know, they're the differences between the zero and 100 and Vienna um, switch on quickly.